Hi everyone, Fenris Models here, and today we're going to take a look at the Pegasus Hobbies Triceratops in 1 24th scale. So I picked this up um, online. I found it, um, I want to say it was about $40 USD, something like that. Um, and I wanted to, because I've been wanting to get another dinosaur kit. Um, I'm sure a few of y'all have heard me talk about this in various forums and whatnot. Um, I have done a Lindbergh Jurassic Park Tyrannosaurus that was a lot of fun, and I've been wanting to get another dinosaur to kind of add to it. Um, so yeah, this was the, uh, I found this one and it looks like it's going to be a good build, so um, you can hear how, this box by the way is hefty and you can, you can already hear the parts in there, right? Um, but we have a little, nice little blurb about the Triceratops. Um, Tells us that we have nine pieces, a display base and a name plaque, and our sculptor and the paint for the um, uh, art there. And yeah, so kind of a basic box, but yeah, let's take a look inside. So we will start with the instructions. Um, we have a nice little informational about the Triceratops here. Um, and now, because again, there's only nine pieces, this is going to be a very short um, build, hopefully. This is our instructions. <laughs> it is kind of a one step. Um, it does mention, and I, I like the fact that it added in, that um, if you're having issues with getting it to balance on the base, um, that you can pin it, and we'll get to that in a second. Um, but it's nice that they added it. And then on the back side, we have some tips on how to paint it, um, uh, kind of how you, the um, the paint chart itself. And it does mention um, that, so this kit is a vinyl kit. Um, and what that means is our normal plastic cement isn't going to work on it. It's not polystyrene, it's not plastic, it's vinyl. Super glue is what you will normally see people use to help assemble these, but there are these are going to be so hefty that I think I'm just going to use the super glue kind of to um, tack things in place. And I did actually end up picking up some five minute uh, epoxy that I will be using like deep inside here to really fasten these pieces in. So but yeah, with that note out of the way, let's look at the parts. So first thing we have is the Triceratops body. And this thing's hefty. This could hurt somebody if you threw it too hard. <laughs> like, um, which is kind of impressive. Um, but you can see there's a lot of detail in there. Um, we have the little osteoderms, um, lots of scales and kind of leatheriness. Um, not much to actually need to clean up. We do have a couple um, little spots there. I could, I'll probably run a um, knife along this edge to kind of knock down that mold line, but yeah, there's not much that needs to be done to this. Um, I will be giving it all a wash um, because vinyl is going to, um, by nature, they need to use more um, release agent on vinyl kits. Um, and so this is more likely to have some of that still remaining on it, and especially with all these crevices. So we're going to give this a good wash before we start painting after, you know, after we get clean up done. So. Here's the head. Um, got some nice detail in there. I'm not sure how I'm gonna paint this up yet, but I think I what I wanna do is do something kind of mute, uh, mute like we saw on the box art, you know, something kind of gray, brown, something like that. And then up here do like a bright blue, a bright green, some kind of like flashy, um, display type thing. Um, I don't know yet though. But yeah, so you can see there, this one probably is going to have a little bit more cleanup. Um, we have a little more of those kind of spots on it. Um, and you see it attaches both the horns and oddly enough, they, well, maybe not oddly, but they did leave out the, um, upper beak. And I think that's to let you really get in there and paint the mouth. Um, because it can be a pain to try to paint mouths if they didn't do that. So there's the beak. And so now you can get the upper portion of the mouth. And so we just... That's the thing, everything kind of slides together pretty well. Um, I will also be using some Tamiya Putty Basic Type to 
uh, eliminate the seam lines. Um, it's, I think it's more important on like organic subjects to really do that compared to like I can get away with a seam line on, on a plane, especially if I can disguise it as like a panel line or something. Um, that's not really doable um, with organic things, right? Like you don't you don't have a seam line on your thumb, do you? <laughs> you know. Um, and we got our two rear legs here. And again, lots of surface detail. And for the most part, these all um, just plug in. I was playing around with it ahead of time um, just to kind of see how things went together. Again, always dry fit, but um, you know, I could push that in there and, and almost be okay. Um, so it's a nice snug fit. Um, We have our front legs. And our horns. And then finally we have this nice little display base. And you can see they've molded the feet in there to make it um, uh, you know, kind of sink in there. And a little nameplate. But what I want to show you, I'm going to talk through this while I do, just kind of, I'm going to slap everything together real fast. Um, but for heavy kits, sometimes you want to do what's a technique called pinning. Um, and what that means is you drill a hole essentially in, um, in this case, we drill a hole in the base where the foot feet are and then drill a hole in the bottom of the foot and insert a metal rod, a metal pin, metal wire um, in place and glue it in both so then it gives it, you're not just gluing from that surface bit, you also have a support kind of going through. Think of it similar to like rebar on um, inside of concrete for buildings, you know, that same kind of a thing. But yeah, so you can see, and that one's kind of lifting up a little bit um, compared to the back one, but again, I think that's a, it gives it a very organic feel. with this. Again, you could almost just do this and call it good. Not really, but <laughs> so I mean, that's 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 assembly, right? Um, but what I like about it is it has this kind of like you can easily make that a charging pose. You could say that it's just walking. Um, I'm actually going to be using this charging. As I said, I want to display it with the T-Rex. Um, I also have a diorama for the upcoming group build in Kits and Bits Discord. He is having a what if um, group build at the moment that it's ongoing right now and it ends I think on July 1st. Um, and I will be using this Triceratops as part of my entry for that. So but yeah, that was a look at this one. It's kind of a, a again, it's a really fast short build. Um, there's all of nine parts. Um, and as I've shown, you can assemble it super fast um, and disassemble it sort of fast. <laughs> there it goes. But yeah, so I am looking forward to this build. Um, again, uh, this is again one that you're going to want to use super glue and five minute epoxy on. You're not going to be wanting to use uh, Tommy Extra Thin. It, it's not. It's not going to glue it just because it's not even polystyrene but even if it was this is so hefty you want something that's gonna be um you know much much heavier duty you know so um but anyway uh, yeah so let me know what you thought of this um i i'm hoping to do more dinosaur models over over time as well if you guys are interested in seeing them please let me know in you know the comments below and all that jazz um, and in the meantime, stay safe and keep modeling. A massive shout out to Callie Bear for becoming the first gift set tier patron over on Patreon. I am extremely grateful for your support.